can't wait to see how my low effort discus statue guy turned out. Let me just open the walk in high school furnace in violation of multiple state and federal regulations and hope what I find inside won't change the trajectory of my life. Aw, oh, beans. It's time for Halloween! That means grab your candy corn and your Cracker Barrel Ghost because I'm turning on Hocus Pocus and you can't leave until I say so I have the talking stick. Hocus Pocus is the ideal Halloween movie. We got a teen character fighting off a monster on Halloween night in suburbia northeastern America. Um, where have I seen this before? I actually wasn't introduced to Hocus Pocus until I was 12. I remember sitting on the living room carpet organizing my Halloween candy when I watched the last 20 minutes and I was like, this stuff slaps. At the time of drawing this, I haven't seen the new movie, but after watching the original countless times, I've decided my love couldn't be contained, and I went ahead and made a video on the original 1993 film. Yeah, I'm kind of the expert on this type of stuff, so who better to give you a perfect scene by scene recap than the guy who spent all of June making a comprehensive video about candy corn. So it all starts with this kid in Salem, which, if you didn't know, had a bit of a stinky reputation for witches. His sister is captured by three witches, who kill her two minutes into the Disney Channel original movie. The kid is turned into an immortal cat. The witches hang out to dry for three 300 years and now we're in the 90s. This new guy is Max and he just moved here and tried to move in on Allison, a girl with the fanciest house who passes out apple juice on Halloween and some bully stole his shoes. Max, his little sister Danny, and Allison go to the 300 year old witch house turned run down tourist trap and steal some Zippo lighters. Because Max has God on his side, Max lights a candle and the witches bust the door down. The kids take their evil cookbook and skedaddle to the sewers with Catboy. Also there's a zombie named Billy and the actor really put those lights on. The witches take public transportation and spend 10 minutes chicking an already unstable marriage of a guy in red pajamas. The kids find all the adults at a party and the witches curse them with a choreographed song and dance. Then the kids go to a school and Hansel and Gretel, the witches in previously stated discus statue furnace. The witches survive and yoink the cookbook and Danny back to the witch house where they plan to chug jug her soul. Max turns on a 30 watt light and says daylight savings time and the witches are stunned for two rounds. Then they go to a graveyard. The only thing Billy achieved in this movie is setting Danny down in a grave and the witches fly on vacuum cleaners and turn to statues then explode. Oh, let's go! Let's cross! Oh yeah, and the cat dies. <laughs> I love this movie. There's a vintage when it comes to Halloween movies, and it's around the early 90s to mid-2000s. Halloween in 1993? The flavor, you know what I mean? You got Hocus Pocus and Nightmare Before Christmas in one year. Then you got Halloween Town around the corner, ending it all with, um, Monster House. Apparently the insults the witches used were actual curses back in the day, and they had an on-staff historian who read from a moldy old history book to tell them. Imagine if that was your job. Like, yeah, I read from the ye old swear word book. Like, no bro, we're looking for the different kind of curse. And actually, one of my most prized possessions is a DVD copy of Hocus Pocus. Why you ask? Well, it's because I'm a nerd, a real pencil pusher. When I'm not doodling, I'm in my room reading. I know, many people's hot take in life is that they're either not interested in Halloween or books, and unfortunately, that sums me up entirely. Um, I read quite a bit, and if you browse the bookstore now and then, you might run across a number of books near Cubicle by this guy named Brandon Sanderson. I gobble this guy's stuff up like a hungry hungry hippo, enough that I frequently listen to his books and podcasts as I'm animating. Meow. Well, I was going to meet Mr. Sanderson at a signing, and I wanted him to sign something special. And I forgot to tell you, but the witches are sisters, and their last name, um, is Sanderson. It does not take an Einstein to see where this is going. I stood in line with my copy of Hocus Pocus while everyone else gave me weird looks with their books. Man, I could go to a dinner party with the US President's Einstein. Einstein and Newton and the at and girl and I still wouldn't be as nervous as meeting Brandon Sanderson. With numb hands, I gave B-Money my copy of Hocus Pocus, expecting to explain myself when he picked it up and said, oh hey look, the Sanderson sisters. <laughs> He signed it. I left lightheaded, and here it is next to my little figure I found in my grandma's house that I think is possessed for scale. Yep, so that's it. Hocus Pocus 2 is out now, so you can watch it straight away now that I gave you a delectable recap. I'm finishing up a long video about my pet tarantula, and we'll get it to you sometime in October. Then I'm reading my Goosebumps box set and drinking apple cider through a skeleton sippy cup until November. Haha, <laughs> no. Before you ask, I don't want anyone with direct contact to Brandon Sanderson watching this video to persuade him to formally invite me to dinner before signing these government-approved adoption papers via private DM at Spooky Tune on Twitter, just so we're clear. Ah.